hands together and welcome to the stage, Mr. Mark Steele. <laughs> You know what? This is the question about the NHS and about so many other things. Where's the money gone? We used to have money in this country for shit like that, but now they go, oh, we can't afford it. We can afford it in the 1920s. We could have all fire engines and libraries and schools. But it's gone now. We can't... Where's it gone, the money? And then they've got an answer for where the money's gone. I'll tell you who's got it, who's nicked it all. The poor, that's who's got it. <laughs> They're the ones who've got, they've swiped it, they've taken it all, the poor, look at them, roll, look at them tramps, rolling it, covered in gold, they've got it all. We can't take it back off the rich, they haven't got two eight bits to rub together, they're skinny. It's the poor who've got it all, all of it. So like every day you get articles in the newspaper saying things like, what about that woman in a council estate in Cardiff? Have you seen about her? 137 kids, she's got every single one of them on benefits, every single one. Now they've brought a giraffe and the giraffe's on benefits. And... <laughs> And now they've said that the giraffe's getting a crick neck because the ceiling's too low. So, so the, the council's put them up in St Paul's Cathedral. And, and now one of the kids has got compulsive snooker syndrome. So, so now the, the state has given them a full-size snooker table, but the mother says she can't be referee because she's allergic to white gloves. So the mayor comes round and counts up all the points for them, otherwise he'll be put in jail by Europe. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Every day shit like this. The poor, that's going to the poor and immigrants. Immigrants, there the one. Look at them, nine of them living in a shed. They've got all the money. <laughs> immigrants, people voting for UKIP because they're crapping themselves. It's no wonder, is it? People are thinking, oh, luck, because the papers. Every day, politicians, they say things like, 30 million Bulgarians now can come to this country. 30 million any day. 30 people are shitting themselves, aren't they? They're thinking, one day I'll open the door to go in the garden. The door's shut. I can't get out. I can't get us bloody Bulgarians. There's millions of them. I can't get out. <laughs> no, we all live here now. Nothing you can do. We all in garden now. <laughs> I can't. Who is this? Dad? This is Dimitrov. His head is stuck in cat flap. Nothing you can do here. <laughs> Lisbon Treaty say you must leave him there now. Come every day. Feed with saucer. Milk. Give him every day. <laughs> Because that's the official attitude towards immigration now in this country, is I'll tell you what your immigrants do. This is what happens with immigrants, right? Is they, like, they, they run off from Somalia or one of them places where they've all got Ebola or something like that, right? And then they, they walk across Africa, right? They climb in a barrel, they float to Spain, right? They travel across Europe on the back of a truck in a crate full of piglets, cling to the side of an hovercraft, come over here, then we're supposed to look after these people who are prepared to make an effort. That's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens. Gone, all the money is gone, it's gone. It's, it used to be, it used to be you'd think, right, well, uh, uh, whatever else happens in life, I'll be all right, they'll look after me, there'll be a council house or something, whatever, the worst thing, pension, something. But now you're skinned from the day you're born, and if you go to university, you owe about 50 grand, and you've got to pay that off while you're saving up for a house because there's nothing else left, and pensions, they're all gone. And you get these people on the, the news and the, the radio programs and stuff, and they'll say, experts on finance, and they say, we've got to get used to the fact that nowadays we need, even when we're in a, the middle of our working lives, to be putting a little bit more, put a little bit more aside every month for a pension. We've got to think about it a bit more. As if people have got a bit more. <laughs> people must be sitting listening to this thinking, oh, right, that's where I put all my extra money, is it? I've been wondering what to do with all the extra money. <laughs> it's been driving me mental, there's no way. I've got, I can't get round the house. There's fucking money, I can't get out. <laughs> I'll be going to the zoo and feeding it to tigers. Why extra money? <laughs> and they ring in and go, oh, I don't really have anything extra. And they say, well, we can all make sacrifices. Maybe you've got children. Why not abandon them to the forest? <laughs> And then they'll say, even when you're about 18, 19, as soon as you start working your first job, really you should be already thinking about putting a little bit aside for your pension right from the early age at 18 or 20, putting money aside. What sort of a miserable teenager? <laughs> How much of a fucking useless excuse of a wank-headed, shitty, fucking, <laughs> piss-faced, teenage pile of fucking rubbish do you have to be to put money aside for a pension when you're fuck off if you're even thinking about it? 
fuck off! How dare you even think about that? I'm sweaty, what a waste of... Bruv, you're coming down like the, the club tonight. It's your favourite DJs you get here. <laughs> no, I'm going to put that entrance money aside into my ISA account, you see? <laughs> You see, you might think you're having more fun in life, but when we're 74, I'm going to be the one who can afford to stay in Weatherspoons for another 10 minutes for another pay of fuck off! <laughs> I suppose the health service is, in a way, the, the sort of best example of the, the arguments that have been over the last few years about our society should be run, in Britain or around the world, should it be run in such a way that a few people can make a profit. Indeed, that seems to be the way that loads of people now think that's the only way something can run. If, it's, if there's not someone making money out of it, the thing will just dissolve like it's some sort of law of physics. Uh, or should it be run because, well, this, is, this seems to be the best way of, of running it, not just making a profit, but for everybody equally. And the health service is, is the most obvious example of something that clearly not only is much more efficient if it's run collectively with everybody paying in an amount that they can afford and people using it as and when they need it, uh, and, and not just in order to make someone very rich. And most people in Britain accept that and go, yes, of course, that's a brilliant and it should, you know, and all the arguments that you get about everything else, you, well, if something, if someone isn't making a profit, then it simply isn't going to work or people will just steal off it, things like that, you know, they'll go and take more than they need. People will just go to the hospital every week and say, I need a kidney operation. It's free, I might as well have it. I'm an idiot not to have a, a liver out. It's free! Get in and get your liver out! They do it for nothing. Of course people don't do that. I don't think, anyway. <laughs> but where's it gone? So that's it now. Everything, everything now. It's got to be, oh, we've got to have business people coming in. Health service, everything. Everything's got to be paid for. Profit, everything. Every little thing. And it encourages all the worst in people, doesn't it? All the, but why should I pay? Why should I pay for the, for the health service? I'm not ill, those people. Why should I pay for a library? I don't go to the library. Why, I'm, not, I'm not on fire. If you want to be on fire, you pay for the fire engine. <laughs> Everything like that. Lamp posts soon, they'll have little metres in. You'll put 5p in the lamp post, it'll give you just enough light to get to the next one. <laughs> Why should I pay? Why should I pay for your light? I was indoors, I've got my own torch. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks very much, Ernie, and thanks very much for coming along. You'll be marvellous.